the corn earworm, keeping the earworm and its cousin, the European corn borer, out of crops is one of the main reasons Champlain, Virginia farmer Jay Hundley plants genetically modified corn. We've seen an advantage on that European corn borer. They can be a problem. It pretty much tends to them 100%. Corn earworms, it does have an effect on those, and you don't see nowhere near as many in the, fe in the corn fields. Hundley also grows GM soybeans. They are designed to make killing weeds easier because these soybeans will survive treatment with an herbicide called Roundup. Hundley says the herbicide tolerant soybeans give him more flexibility when he sprays his fields, and he likes that convenience. It's time savings and stuff like that. We don't have to be there today. We can wait till tomorrow. The GM seeds cost more, and his contract with the seed company doesn't let him save them to plant the next year, but he says the benefits outweigh the costs. Farmers across the United States have come to the same conclusion. This year, 85% of the corn and 91% of the soybeans grown in the U.S. are genetically modified. No other country grows nearly as much. While the vast majority of corn, soybeans, and cotton in the United States are genetically modified, a small but growing group of farmers are going in a different direction. About 200 kilometers north in Adamstown, Maryland, Nick Marivelle is also farming corn and soybeans. But Marivelle does not raise genetically modified crops. What we're trying to do is to encourage things which would happen naturally. Marivelle is one of an increasing number of organic farmers, those who don't use chemical fertilizers, insecticides, or weed killers. Organic cropland makes up a tiny fraction of the total acreage in the United States, just one half of one percent in 2005, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. But that figure represents a doubling of total organic acreage since 1997. Part of the reason Marivelle doesn't grow GM crops is because he is concerned about unintended consequences. With genetically modified organisms, they have been released into the environment. They can take on a life of their own, that is, they can reproduce and spread and crossbreed with other species. And I don't feel that we have really quite uh, mastered what we're doing with these yet. The GM crops have received a green light from regulators in the U.S. Much of Europe remains opposed, but the scientific body advising Europe's food safety regulators recently said current varieties are unlikely to harm health or the environment. But Marivelle says another reason he doesn't grow GM crops is because he doesn't need them to get good yields. As an organic farm, we present an alternative. And as you can see, we get crops here. We're not overtaken by insects, disease, or weeds. We can do it here without the genetically modified. In a good year, Marivelle admits he doesn't produce as much as his neighbors who use chemical fertilizers and GM crops. But in a dry year, he says he outproduces them. <laughs> and Marivelle's organic products fetch a premium price, which helps his bottom line. With the need to protect the environment and feed the planet both growing steadily, many experts predict farmers will call on both genetically modified and organic agriculture to meet the demands. Steve Barragona, VOA News.